Go Ben. Good afternoon. Uh, firstly, there's been some amazing speakers so far, so I'm, I'm really inspired, and uh, I'd just like to thank the organizers of TEDx Noosa. You guys are doing an amazing, amazing job. Uh, just a quick introduction. I run a software company down in Pridgen Beach where we export our software and cloud solutions worldwide. And uh, I have a little vision for the Sunshine Coast, which I'd like to share. The vision is to create this as a hotspot for innovation, entrepreneurs, and tech startups to do business on, in the Sunshine Coast and to live and work in one of the best environments here. Uh, I was initially attracted to the Sunshine Coast about 10 years ago. I traveled around Australia for a year and sussed out all the best spots, and I chose here, the Sunshine Coast is where I'd, I'd like to be. <laughs> So I do a lot of travel worldwide for my work and uh, traveling a lot to Silicon Valley and the US in general and Europe. And I've noticed like some of the hot spots where other people are creating great startups and innovation and some of the ingredients we need to do to bring that back to the coast. So I'd like to share some of my, my adventures. Uh, firstly, there's a, a recent study by Telefonica where they surveyed the top cities worldwide for entrepreneurship and innovation. And they had some very interesting insights. But just quickly, I'm just wondering who here has a business or would like to start a new business? Just like to see it, sure. Awesome. <laughs> so that's almost half the room, which is fantastic. So firstly, it's probably no surprise, but Silicon Valley is like the hottest place to create a startup company. And a startup company is basically a company where you as a founder go out there, usually on your own money, and put an idea or a product or a service out there in the marketplace. Uh, Silicon Valley is kind of home to some of the greatest brands changing the world. It's uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google, they all hail from Silicon Valley. And it's a great melting pot of like amazing people, and it's very, uh, yeah, it's awesome to be out. <laughs> so um, the population of Silicon Valley, which is about the Bay Area, is about 7 million people, so it's quite sizable. Uh, the average age of someone working in a startup company is about 34, and a really interesting People there are working at least 10 hours a day on their company or startup. And the education ratio is about one to someone who just went to high school, or 2.5 that has a master's or PhD. Uh, I travel a lot to the Valley, and yeah, I find it really inspiring. But they also have their own challenges as well. There's, it's quite noticeable, it's kind of the homeless rate in Silicon Valley, and there's a lot of people under the poverty line as well. So even though it's heralded as a poster child of startups innovation, they also have their own challenges. Okay, this is really interesting. Tel Aviv and Israel, they're actually the second largest hotspot in the world for startups, which is really surprising. There's a population of only 7 million people in Israel, but these guys are really on the money. So they don't have any natural resources to kind of kick back and relax on like we do. <laughs> they actually have to use their intelligence. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's actually funny. Some of the universities in Israel, like you do a degree in business, but you actually part of the degree, you have to start a business and actually do it to get your degree, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> Best way to learn. Um, and Israel has obvious ties back to the US, so they have a, like, a lot of financial aid, and a lot of the bigger companies in Israel have you know, buddies in Silicon Valley, so there's a bit of an overlay there. And not surprisingly, they have the highest density of startups in the world. So Tel Aviv is quite a small region, two thirds of that the Sunshine Coast. And there's just thousands of companies doing amazing things there. So it's a bit of a role model for us. Another interesting one is Waterloo in Canada. Waterloo is kind of like a university town. Uh, they've got about half the population that we do here in the Sunshine Coast. Uh, they have a lot of large tech companies that kind of call Waterloo home. The old one is Blackberry, uh, the RIM, who used to be quite popular. Uh, they've had a bit of interesting kind of hit on the local economy because RIM's been downsizing it's actually had a strange effect where it's freed up a lot of talent and people are getting out there creating new startups rather than just working for the big man. Um, and Waterloo is ranked about 16th in the world on the global hotspots. So if these guys can do it with half the population we do, I think we can do a good job too. Uh, not surprisingly, Sydney is actually doing really well. Uh, Australia as a whole, we're actually doing fantastic things on the global stage for startups. Sydney and Melbourne are ranked in the top 20. And Sydney's kind of above <laughs> Melbourne at the moment. Um, there's some amazing startups coming out of Sydney. There's a lot of government support. There's incubators. There's shared working spaces. They've really got some magic happening down in Sydney. And one of the companies which I find the most inspiring, it's a company called Atlassian. And I knew the co-founders, they started their company about 10 years ago, basically on their credit card, $10,000 a credit card. 
And these guys have managed over the last 10 years to build a company with about 400 employees. And they're listing on the NASDAQ soon, and they're really kicking some butt. <laughs> so it's yeah, inspiring to see such a small startup go you know, on the global stage. So from my travels and visiting some of these hotspots and doing business, I kind of see like five main ingredients that create an ecosystem for startups. Uh, the first is events and meetups, just like we're here today. Uh, Co-working spaces are, are critical as well for people starting a startup so that you can get in easily to an office uh, without like a high kind of uh, rent. Uh, access to capital is vital. So you have your startup company, you've proven the business model works, but you need money to scale. Uh, incubators are essential as well. We're lucky enough here to have incubators on the Sunshine Coast, the Innovation Center, which a lot of IT companies have come out and do amazing things. So congratulations to those guys, doing a great job. And the community in general for startups. So I'd just like to go into detail. Some... So meetups and events. For example, when you go to Silicon Valley, there's just an amazing array of events going on all the time, from people hacking this new programming language to people discussing new viral marketing techniques to new business models. So that's like an essential part of creating a hotspot. Uh, for example, here's a, I think it's in Sydney, the Fishburners, there's a, a Mongo March Madness Hackathon. So a bunch of geeks get together for the weekend and just program and create some cool things. Yeah, so those kind of events really make innovation happen. And there's lots of beer and <laughs> things like that. Uh, Co-working spaces, this is, I'd say, probably the second most important. So, for example, our brothers down in Sydney, there's a, a company called Fishburners, and these guys have about four levels of a downtown office in the CBD. There's over 100 IT startup companies in this building. Uh, it's, it's affordable. Uh, you can get in there and start your business. There's other tech entrepreneurs around. There's meetups after work, people having beers, talking about their new product or marketing. So that's kind of like creates this ecosystem to m make magic happen. And other cities worldwide have really great co-working spaces. Uh, for example, we're heading to San Francisco in June where we're setting up a little sales and marketing office downtown. And for $700 a month, you can rent a really cool space in a warehouse with all these other tech entrepreneurs. And it's kind of like an easy way in. Access to capital. So this is really important when you want to scale your startup company and make something like, that's worked really successful. And here in Australia, we're having a bit of difficulty with that. Uh, we've raised about $122 million last financial year here in Australia, whereas other tech startups, uh, tech regions like Israel, have raised over $2 billion. So it's quite a challenge. Uh, my company recently uh, raised some venture capital here in Australia to get our company to the next level. And that process was quite difficult. There was a lot of, um, yeah, it was tough work, kind of full-time job for some time. And just pitching your product or your idea to some of the investors in Australia uh, it's quite difficult. Um, but luckily enough, there's uh, some new venture capital firms sprouting up. Uh, this one here is a new one called Blackbird BC, and they've raised about $30 million, and they're looking to invest that into Australian kind of ideas and startup companies. So if you have an idea, check out those guys online and pitch it to them, because <laughs> it might work. Um, but here in Australia, uh, startups on the early side, we raise, uh, sorry, the US guys raise about five times more startup capital and up to 100 when our business is ready to scale. So we've got a lot of things to do here in Australia. Um, I'd love to see uh, more of our superannuation funds and Australian billionaires backing Australian startups. Uh, I'd love to see, you know, rather than a dinosaur park and call them a tech park from Clive. <laughs> uh, yeah. So my vision <laughs> is for the Sunshine Coast to be an epicenter of technology, bringing awesome people worldwide to build amazing products and amazing companies and uh, live in the Sunshine Coast dream. So, thank you. <laughs>